Data Access Patterns Data access patterns deal with the organization of, access to, and interactions between data within a database. This is not just limited to something like Excel or Google Sheets, but can apply to any collection of data. The Domain Model Pattern A fancy way of saying we create objects that hold both data and behaviors. Domain refers to the subject or area the software is trying to solve, while model refers to the way solutions are represented and organized, usually reflective of its real-world counterpart. For instance, in the domain of online shopping, you might create items and have a cart object to hold those items. Items would then have data, such as name, amount, or price, with methods to change name or apply a discount to the price. Cart will have items as its data and might have methods like add or remove. This pattern excels in complex domains and is often more intuitive, but demands significant upfront design effort and understanding. The Repository Pattern An intermediary between logic and data, providing a clean, consistent interface for data access. It centralizes queries, making them reusable and reducing duplication. Think of it as a librarian who fetches the right book, the data in this case, based on your query shielding you from the complexities of the library's organization. This pattern simplifies unit testing and ensures a clear separation of concerns. For simple projects, a repository might be overkill. A repository can also become bloated if not careful. The Unit of Work Pattern A way to manage transactional consistency by tracking changes to objects during an operation and ensuring all updates are committed as a single unit. Common actions like save, publish, or checkout are all forms of commitment that lock in changes made up to that point. By coordinating changes, it prevents inconsistencies and supports undo-like functionality. The Data Mapper Pattern A way to separate objects from a database by creating a way to match data between the two, rather than storing data directly within the objects themselves. This is useful if the data or the database source changes. This pattern increases the complexity of data access and requires greater care to maintain mapping logic. The Active Record Pattern Not to be confused with records, which are a data structure often used in functional programming. The Active Record Pattern wraps domain logic and data access logic into a single class, where the object itself knows how to persist its data. This pattern violates the single responsibility principle and can become difficult to scale and test in larger systems. It's best used for smaller projects or where the object is directly tied to a row of the database. The Query Object Pattern A way to turn database queries into objects that can be reused and combined for flexibility and readability. This pattern is useful when you need to perform complex queries or when queries need to be dynamically composed. The downside is that it can create unnecessary boilerplate code for smaller queries or lead to an abundance of small classes being created. Table Data Gateway, a way of creating a class or interface for SQL operations related to an entire database. It serves as an access point for the data, but generally does not perform non-SQL behaviors on it. This pattern is useful for fine-grained control, but tightly couples code to the particular database it's working on. Row Data Gateway, in this pattern, each row of a database represents an object, where each column is some property of that object. The object itself is generally only responsible for CRUD operations. It's used as an access point for data, rather than the object being responsible for more generalized behavior. In some instances, it can also handle saving and loading. Value List Handler This pattern manages static or frequently used lists, such as drop-down options or enums. It serves as a catalog of predefined values that rarely change, but are accessed repeatedly ensuring consistency and simplicity. Examples might include the cardinal directions or a list of all countries in the world. However, this pattern is unsuitable for dynamic or large datasets. The Snapshot Pattern A way to capture the state of an object at a specific moment in time. Where the memento pattern is often intended to preserve and later restore a prior state, the snapshot pattern merely records state for later comparison or audit. Both patterns increase memory use and complexity as the size and interconnectedness of objects grow. If there are any design patterns you think we missed, let us know in the comments below. 
If you found this video helpful, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe so you stay up to date when we release new content. If you'd like to learn more about programming and game design, click on the link appearing on your screen now, or see the description below for ways you can help support this channel. Thanks, and take care.